The annual Golden Apple Caravan, sponsored by the Public Education Foundation, starts off at the Foundation offices and begins to wind its way nearly 100 miles through Marion County for a day full of surprises, recognition, and the all-important delivering of the coveted Golden Apples to their deserving recipients. We're at Greenway Elementary School where we're naming one of our Golden Apple teachers. And I'm in a first grade class right now. The teacher is Makita Bly, Mrs. Bly. Yes, you can all wave to the camera right now. I love to invite people on the caravan. I love to invite volunteers from the foundation, our board of directors, as well as district staff. And a lot of our district administrators spend their time in an office. So when they get the opportunity to visit a school and to recognize our teachers, they're happy and excited to be able to do that. We have a whole bunch of people who yeah. want to, well, along with me, congratulate you for being one of our five Golden Apple finalists. Thank you, awesome. I think it's awesome. Teachers are not the type of people that pat themselves on the back and most of the time teachers are, are knocked down and given more and more to do and this is a time where these teachers are going to be put in the limelight if only for a short time and everybody needs that in their life. Everybody needs the, the reinforcement of what's doing good and then when you have a teacher from your school, the other people in the school get excited about it. It, it gives people things to work for, watch and see what those teachers are doing while they're successful. I think it's it's an awesome thing for education, for our community, and for our children. They're the ones that benefit. It just makes you want to roll up your sleeves and sit down with the students and work. Well, these teachers that we select as Golden Apple teachers have really put themselves out there. First, they were selected by their school, of course, as their school's teacher or rookie teacher of the year. And then they allowed themselves to go through a very rigorous process. They had to write and submit their portfolio, which was read and scored by the committee. They came to interviews. They, they had classroom observations. They had five people in and out of their classrooms during the month of January. And so they've really put themselves out there, not only to represent themselves, but to represent their school, their faculty, and most importantly, their students and it is a big deal to be able to recognize teachers for a job well done. Congratulations to this year's crop of golden apples. Jamie O'Brien, Makita Bly, Thomas Allison, Tanya Travieso, and Sarah Paris. Also congratulations to Rookie Teacher of the Year Dylan Bishop. Science fair is a big deal here at Osceola. Um, all of our advanced science students have a mandatory requirement that they participate in the science fair and many of our other students choose to as well. So every student that participates has to go through the process. They begin in August or early September, almost at the very beginning of school, and they submit pieces and parts of the project to their science teachers as the, as the semester goes on. So by the time we reach December, the end of the semester, their projects are finished. They do in-class presentations of the entire project to their class for the teacher and then the students who perform the best and who have the best projects are invited to come to the interview phase which is going on here today in our gymnasium and they uh, put their projects in and then an administrator and a guest judge interviews each child so each child has two judges an administrator and a guest judge and we ask them a series of questions about their project and they're graded on a rubric and the ten best projects move on to the district science fair and then we used each substance and wiped it off and see which one took off the low germs the best. The process of the f science fair is, is a, it's a thinking process and it takes kids through some critical thinking skills, you know, analyzing what they've done. It helps them to be a reflective learner. And it's incredibly important, no matter whether it's math, science, English, language arts, for kids to be reflective about the process that they've gone through so they can then work on what they would do better next time. What is, what did I learn from this? Um, how can I extend this thinking beyond what I'm doing right now and that's really important because we want kids to do that in every phase of their lives so that as adults that you can continue to do that. My project science fair topic was to see if will the size of a model rocket affect the height of its travels. Uh, I used three rockets to measure it. Uh, I used all the same engines, C63 engines. Uh, what got me into this project is me and my dad have been doing rockets ever since I can remember. So what I thought was maybe this would be a good science fair project for me. When we finally get to this phase here where you can see the, the fruits of your labor and, and parents and kids start to see the, the growth and the learning that has gone into the process, it becomes a lot more readily apparent that, you know, this wasn't so bad, it was worth it.
The Regional Science Fair is this Thursday and Friday at the National Guard Armory in Ocala, with the awards ceremony Friday night at MTI's Brown Greet and Cole Auditorium. You know, dads play such an important role in a child's life and a child's education, and we want to make sure our dads feel welcome coming into an elementary school because, like you said, a lot of times it is the moms that are coming in, and we just want to say, hey, dads, you know, we want you too. You play an important role. You can listen to your child read every night. These are some, some things that you can do support reading at home, and um, we, we appreciate all that you do. Have a donut and enjoy, you know, the morning with your child. The Glee Given Out Foundation has an awesome grant opportunity for all the schools within the nation and one of the qualifications for that and for the application is to submit a video, a music video. So our Harmony Group, which is our performing ensemble for Shady Hill Elementary, um, submitted this video and we were chosen uh, one of the two for the South region of the United States, which is 11 states, um, as finalists. These two finalists now, ourselves and another video, are online right Right now um, and you can vote for one of those two videos to be one of the six winners in the whole United States and if you win you get a free concert from Radio Disney Superstars as well as a grant towards our school and towards our music program. Voting ends Wednesday, February 11th at midnight Pacific time. So you can vote up until I think that's 2 a.m. Eastern time, something like that. Um, and it's voting every day. So you can vote once per 24 hours for every IP address. They can go to the Given Out Foundation website. Um, and from there, you can find the Music in Our Schools 2016 tour. And you can find the South Division, that's us, and look for Shady Hill Elementary. And then, of course, vote for Shady Hill Elementary um, and we really hope to be able to win this grant um, and money for our music program since we have full-time music back in the schools we're trying to amp back up all of our music programs here in Marion County um, and we would love to also have this free concert for our whole student body here at Shady Hill Elementary too. Deadline for applications for out of area reassignment for the 2016 2017 school year will be February 15th. We will continue to accept applications after the deadline, but those who get their applications for transfer in by the February 15th deadline have the best chance of getting their uh, approval with space availability uh, and etc. Congratulations to Donnellan High's Lorente McRae, who won a Super Bowl championship Sunday night with the Denver Broncos. Eight years ago, he signed a scholarship offer from the University of Florida on National Signing Day. Uh, today is a very, very exciting day for these young men and their families, also for ourselves and the whole Dunellen community because so these young men started in youth football when they were five, six, seven, eight, and they've had a dream. And the dream is to parlay that into a college education, and now it's becoming a reality for them. National Signing Day usually takes place on the first Wednesday of February. With football being the most popular sport in America, it's a pretty big deal for fans and players alike. Um, a lot of times people think that it's all about, you know, the coach gets real excited on signing day, and I do, I get extremely excited. But it has nothing to do with me. Uh, these guys are up here because they have great families, they have great support in the community, and uh, y'all have done a tremendous job with, the, with these young men. And we're gonna hate, we hate to see them go. It's, it's kind of a bittersweet day, because what we really understand is we won't have them next year. For one Donnellan High School student, this is what it felt like. This day, honestly, it, it defines my future. We all talk about what we want in life, and this is what I want. Like, football is all I know. And I'm glad I also have the educational part, just in case football doesn't work. I know I have the opportunity to actually go to school and study something that I actually love and I plan on doing for my future. The dream came true, you know? Um, 
Like I said before, a lot of kids dream about this day, and I'm one of those kids. And I signed to a college that feels like home. Yes, it's far, but I gotta mature and I gotta do what I have to do. And I feel like this is the best fit for me. And I just signed, it's a great feeling, you know? National signing day, dreamed about it. Since, since I was a kid, I put in the work and dedicated myself. I want to be a running back. I want to be a running back. I want to get my speed up and all of that. And then ever since then, that's all I did. And then I fell in love with the sport. And then my sophomore season, I had a chance at starting running back. I was the starting running back my sophomore season. But unfortunately, I tore my ACL. I suffered an injury that was crucially like career ending. I came back my junior year. I had the brace. I was still like stumbly and I wasn't really like where I wanted to be at. But I didn't give up on my dream. I was discouraged, but I prayed about it and I just didn't give up. And then it brought me here today, my senior year. <laughs> and I love all you guys. I love Danelle and thank you. Yeah.